brand new street and brand new me. Side by side by friends I need. Don't you tell me that you're in town. I already know. Couple days ago. Hey, now that our names are written in stone. Let's be honest, sounds like home. Still I'm here alone and I'm calling your phone. I wish I could wipe my own memory out. I wish I could dream about somebody else. I wish I could talk when the silence is so loud. I wish, oh. Today's the day I'm doing what I call the long drive. I'm driving from our house, which is right here, to Josh's parents' house. Google Maps is saying it's going to take two hours and one minute, so it's not bad at all. I mean, usually it takes two and a half, sometimes even three. It's only 10 to 11 a.m. and it's already 32 degrees. It's one of the hottest days of the year. I'm gonna get going. I have my bag in the boot. I have my phone connected. <laughs> I hate driving long distance. I'm terrified. Let's go. Hello. It's like four days after my last update. I'm going to talk to you while I get rid of my bun. And I have an update for you guys and something that I wasn't expecting to happen. But as you know, on the last day that I did the update, I was driving down to Gatwick and my training course for the airline that I was going to work for was starting the next day and as you probably noticed I'm talking in the past sentence and this is because during my drive there I got an unexpected phone call and I got offered a different job or should I say the same job different airline and after much deliberation on that day I had to make one of the most difficult decisions I've ever been faced with which was choosing between the two airlines so the one that I was going to start for was basically the same that I worked for for uh, four years. A different airline, but like it was even the same airplane. Not even the same model of airplane, but the actual same airplane. They bought the same airplanes from the previous company. And the model of business was the same thing, which was low cost, long haul, which was what I've been doing for four years. And so there was the familiar part of long haul aviation that I knew. So I had to choose between that, going for what I already knew and basically have the same job again, even though, like I mentioned, I applied for cabin chief and they only gave me the position as a junior crew member. But the career prospects on that airline were very good because it's a new airline, they're just starting, so eventually they would need more cabin chiefs and that's where I would 
go and shine and basically get my dream job back as a cabin chief. Anyway, I digress. So I got offered a new job for a different airline. As you can probably guess, I decided to go for that airline instead. Both of them had good things and less good things, not necessarily bad things, but both of them had different positive aspects and things that excited me about them. But at the end of the day, I decided to follow my gut feeling and go for this other airline, which is, and for some reason, I don't know, I feel confident in this thing and I don't mind sharing which airline it is. I have one step left, hold on. Go on. There we go. I never really told you openly which airlines I was working for and no specific reason, it never just happened. So I would tell you about my job and every now and then like you could see my uniform and you could see my crew bag. So if you were paying attention to the details, you knew which airline I was working for. And if you did some research, you'd also find out which other airline is the new airline, but it is basically the same and flies out of Gatwick. All this to say that, oh my God, I am going to be doing ultra long haul flights for Qantas, which is the Australian flag carrier. Oh my fucking God, she went and did it. Right guys, editing Manganet here. I don't know if you understand how awesome this job is getting situation was and I don't think that recording Manganet really made it justice when she was speaking about it. Probably because poor girl she was still in shock about the doing that she did. So let's talk about it. If you're not too familiar with aviation you might not really understand how big Qantas is. So I also googled just on Google image Qantas just to show you because you might not recognize the name but surely if you are at least somehow knowledgeable about aviation you will recognize the planes. So they have these big red tails with a kangaroo on it and they have big boy uh, A380, it's the two-story ones. Look at him here. There's another one. They have Dreamliners. They have so many different types of planes and like Oh my god, yeah, so this is Qantas, here's the logo. You probably saw it somewhere, maybe you've seen it, maybe you have not, that's why I decided to show you. This is from the official careers website at Qantas and I have this open here just to show you. Today we employ over 30,000 exceptional individuals with roughly 93% based in Australia, which means that outside of Australia only 7% of people work there. And that's what I managed to get, one of those jobs outside of Australia working for an Australian company. So within the whole company, I'm part of the 7%. This is from Skytrax. So Skytrax is like the Oscars for aviation. And this was uh, this year's classification, 2022. So as you can see, Qatar won. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the fact that Qantas is in fifth place. So Qantas is the fifth best airline in the world and there's only 7% jobs within the company to work for them outside Australia and yeah guys this is amazing I'm so proud of myself for getting this and I just wanted to make you aware on how much of an epic achievement this was. Basically if you're not in the midst of aviation terms each country usually has one national flag carrier which is the main airline of that country. Qantas is that for Australia. Obviously I'm going to be based in the UK. One of the reasons that made me take that decision is the fact that they don't recruit that often for the UK. The last time they did so was like 2017 or 18. It's very rare that they've recruited to the UK. So when they do there is obviously lots of applicants and not that many spots and for some reason I got it and I was so proud of myself. While I was waiting for their reply to my assessment day I was thinking that in a way I didn't want them to give me the job because then I knew I would have this very difficult decision to do between the two airlines but I would be very disappointed if they told me no because then I would start questioning myself like is all I'm worth is a low-cost airline because that's all I've worked for the last few years but my career started in Ryanair in case you didn't know which is obviously the ultimate low-cost airline. I've always wanted to work for a better airline in that way. All airlines are good in different terms just because one airline is not in the national carrier doesn't mean it's bad okay that's not what I mean but more of a prestige airline and I've applied for a few and I've always been told no and Qantas was the first one that told me yes. And so I'm so proud of myself that after all these years, I finally managed to get 
into the premium airlines range. I'm really excited. Their uniform is so nice and honestly I cannot wait to receive it. I feel like it's gonna be the first time that I'm gonna actually have a uniform that is made to look good, which I'm really excited. I'm really excited about the whole thing and I'll have two weeks between nowish and the start of my training course. The training course is going to be super mega long because it's a prestige airline so the training course is a month and a half and I'll be flying both the Dreamliner which was the plane that I am already licensed on. Obviously on this one it's going to be different, the location of the things inside probably the configuration of the aircraft is going to be different. They have loads of different cabins of service on board but also I'm going to be licensed on a new aircraft. It's an Airbus. It's the first time ever that I'm going to be operating an Airbus. I've always just flew the Boeings and it's the Airbus A380 which is this bad boy over here with two floors. How exciting is that? <laughs> I was driving down to Gatwick. I had the phone call from the person from Qantas saying congratulations you got the job and normal Manganet would just burst out crying. Not straight away, but after the phone call, burst out crying because I'm a very emotional person. But instead, I just felt this sense of ease. I don't really know how to explain the like, the that I was feeling on myself. I had goosebumps and I was just telling myself like, you did it girl. After all this time, you did it. Not only you got offered a job, you got offered two jobs and you got in the premium airlines and you should be so proud of yourself because you probably got ahead of so many other people in the industry and I don't know, I just felt really proud and I felt like this was the thing that I've been waiting for all these years of Covid and all the times that I've cried missing my job. How difficult it was getting back on the game, all the no's that I've heard in the last few years and even when I got the job with the other airline, the fact that I did, they didn't accept me for a cabin chief, which was rough emotionally uh, I don't know, I just felt like everything was leading me to this moment. I know this is very cheesy, but that's what I felt and that was again one of the reasons why I decided to accept this job instead of the other one. And it's going to be a new adventure, obviously I'm going to bring you along. I now have a million paperwork to do again and I have to send a few emails and all that, so that's what I'm going to be doing for the next few days. Also, I'm going to be based out of Heathrow instead of Gatwick. I've never been based out of Heathrow, so I'm excited! I'm excited! Good morning everybody! I'm running a bit late. I had intended on doing this update still in the house, but there's no time for that. Whew. Today I have four hours of driving ahead of me, not in one go, thank goodness. First one is that I'm going to drive for one hour. Going to drive for one hour. Going to drive for one hour to take, take the dogs. The oh my god! To take the dogs to the pet carer, the roundabout. take the dogs to their pet carer, which is one hour away. Uh, it's a new pet carer that we have never used before, but we needed a pet carer for when we're both away. We went the other day for an assessment just to make sure they're suitable and for us to see the, the place and how the staff deals with them and all of that. And it was great. So uh, today they are going for half a day which means four hours, which means I'm going to drive there and then I need to wait around for four hours and then drive them back because it's so far away that there's no point in going there, driving back and then having to drive there again and back would be a waste of time, a waste of fuel. So I'm just going to find something to do for two hours, four hours while I'm there. I don't know what, I might try and get my nails done if I find a place that does them and has availability. If not, I have my laptop in my backpack and I can edit some videos and we'll go from there. There's a couple of charity shops that we saw the other day as well, as in we saw that they exist but we haven't been in, so maybe we'll explore that today as well. Either way, let's hit the road. I'm slightly late, I'm arriving 10 minutes late. <laughs> Welcome to my life! Change of plans. I'm home by the way. Still going to London obviously today because I have things to do there tomorrow and then on Wednesday my training course starts. I'm not gonna be driving anymore. Josh is going down to his parents house with the dogs tonight. I'm going to go with them on the car and then get a train from over there and then on Wednesday the training course starts and the madness and oh my god I'm so scared. I'm excited but I'm nervous at the same time. I don't know how much content I'm going to be able to get from the training course or even at the end of the day but I'll do my best and I'll see you soon ish I don't know hello I have been terrible at updating this vlog and I was carrying 
my camera around with me in my suitcase for many many days weeks and I was never using it so I stopped bringing the camera. Today I finally decided to jump on here and update you. So I'm recording this with my phone, apologies if the quality is not amazing but it is what it is and an update is better than nothing. Today is Sunday and tomorrow it's going to be the start of week 4 I think. <laughs> it's been a while. This week I'm staying in a hotel so this is officially the return of the hotel vlogs. Did you miss it? I came to bed with a laptop and I was laying here amongst all these pillows and I was thinking I really missed the hotel life and I don't know like obviously I've been in hotels since I've stopped fl flying but always with Josh which is not a bad thing is when we go on vacation and things but the hotel life is different because that's just me all by myself it's great anyway so tomorrow is the start of week four and I have my first progressive exam, which is what they call an exam where basically I need to actually write the answers instead of being multiple choice. So I've done a few multiple choices so far, as you can imagine. Tomorrow is the first one where I need to write the answers. Just realized that it's almost 11 p.m. So I think I'm just gonna revise and go to sleep. I'm quite tired. And wish me luck, I guess. Also, I finished watching the series that I've been watching for the last two or three weeks, I don't remember when was the last time I picked up a book, but for the last two or three weeks I've been watching Virgin River on Netflix and it's amazing! Season 5 only comes out in summer 2023, so now I have nothing else to watch. I think I need to go to Netflix and discover a new show because, you know, I don't know, I, I don't think I'm a reader anymore, that's the conclusion that I reach because I don't want to read, I just want to watch TV and films and series. So if you have any nice recommendations let me know in the comments down below. I'm back home after a long three weeks, I think, that I haven't been home. We arrived last night, and by we I mean me, Josh and the dogs, because I've been gone for three weeks, but for the last two weeks, Josh and the dogs have also been away with me, which was really nice. Today's Friday, and my first flight is on Sunday, and I'm leaving tomorrow evening to go back to Heathrow, so I'm there for Sunday morning. <laughs> So basically, I'm only here the whole of today and like half of a day tomorrow. I wrote a list of the things that I need to accomplish in this scarce 24 hours, slightly over, things I need to accomplish. It's a lot of things. I'm gonna do my best. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do them all. At some point during the training, I remember deciding, oh, I'm going to start recording random clips and it's gonna be one of those videos that I used to make. I think it was life lately where I would just record a few clips and then I would edit them all together with music on top and that was it and I would do one a month and I did that for like two years and it was really nice but then I got bored because I was it was back then when I started doing more vlogs so the footage that I was recording I was using it for b-roll on vlogs so I realized that when I was putting those videos together you had already seen all of those clips so I stopped the life lately and I've tried starting life lately a few times after that and I just I keep forgetting to record clips I don't know how I did it back then I was clearly younger and my mind was sharper but now I can't get into the spirit but I remember that at some point during the training I thought oh I'm going to record clips like that and then there's gonna be a portion of this training vlog that is gonna be b-roll with nice music that didn't happen I think I got exactly two maybe three clips but training was nice it was not as difficult as i thought it was gonna be and i don't remember if i ever mentioned my expectations of what i thought the training was gonna be like because it was a long time ago but, but i remember that i thought to myself that training was gonna be difficult because not only was very long but it was a premium airline so i'm sure there was a lot of things to learn and also we were learning about two different aircrafts and from all the airlines that i've done this was the easiest training course i ever done it was the one that required the least studying at home because it was so repetitive it was also the most boring one because it was so repetitive so we had pros and cons but now it's done we had our graduation day on Wednesday in the afternoon and we were supposed to be wearing uniforms for graduation but our uniforms haven't arrived in time <laughs> I'm excited for the first flight I'm flying with one of the girls from my course so it's nice that I'm not gonna be flying alone and I'm going to fly on the Dreamliner which was the plane that I flew on my previous airline even though in this one the other day we had an aircraft walk over and oh my god guys everything is so different so okay I'm all over the place we're flying two aircrafts one is the Dreamliner the same plane that I've always flown but the configuration is so different there are toilets where toilets didn't used to exist and there's three classes of service instead of just two which was what we had 
and the galleys are different and everything is different. Even the ovens are different. Everything is different and everything is in a different location. I think that the only common things are the doors and not even the, not even that, like the doors are in the same place, but the characteristics of each door is different. I don't understand why the plane is so different, but when we had our walk over, walk around the plane, I had mixed feelings because in a way I was back to be inside the Dreamliner because it's been so long. It's been 929 days, guys, by the way. I know that because the other day I went to time and date and I saw how many days had been between my last flight and our graduation day, 929 days. What was I saying? Oh, so I had mixed feelings because I was excited to be back inside the Dreamliner, but then this Dreamliner is completely different. So I'm like, oh, anyway, that's the plane that I'm flying and I'm flying to Perth. So that's the longest route we do. And I think I mentioned we only do two routes out of Heathrow. One of them is Perth, the one I'm doing, the other one is Singapore, the Singapore one we do with the big boy A380, which is a double-decker aircraft, which, when we had the walkover, <laughs> that plane is so big, I'm happy that I don't have to do my very first flight on that. It's so big, I'm gonna be lost all the time. Also, the A380 is an Airbus, and I have never operated an Airbus, I've always just flown Boeing, so basic things like the way the interphones work and things like that, everything is different because I'm used to Boeing, this is an Airbus. I'm dreading my first Singapore flight, but I don't have one roster. But it's exciting, and then after that flight that I'm doing on Sunday, <laughs> I have 11 days off. And that was one of the reasons that made me choose Qantas instead of the other airline that I was gonna go for, I don't know if I've ever mentioned which one, it was all the days off that we get. So I'm really excited for all those 11 days off. Anyway, I've been rambling here for nine minutes and this list is not gonna do itself. 